Cheerleaders can break dress code because their school uniforms? Someone's story about their friend wearing a skirt to school reminded me of my own malicious compliance in high school. Way back in 2013, I was a sophomore in high school, and there was a tradition that on Fridays, the cheerleaders, football players, band members, and the other groups performing, wore their uniforms to class. This wasn't a written tradition, and only the cheerleaders and dance team's uniforms broke the dress code, nobody really batted an eye to it. I wasn't a skirt person, but I liked dresses once in a while. As one can tell by my username, I grew up in Texas, and it's still significantly hot in August and September. One time, while wearing a casual sundress in September, I was pulled out of class and reprimanded, because the end of my dress was 4 inches above the knee, when the dress code said no shorter than 2. I pointed out the cheerleaders and dance team's uniforms every Friday, and how they reached mid-thigh at their longest, but was told that was okay, because students can wear official school uniforms. And was sent home to change. Clearly, somehow, someone had forgotten I was on the golf team. Immediately my mind was turning to the next Friday. The school had recently upgraded the golf team uniforms, and the girls team uniforms, consisted of a short sleeve collared polo shirt and a skirt. If you don't know what a skirt is, it's essentially a skirt and short shorts combined. It looks like a skirt, but they essentially act like built-in bike shorts, and these were short, I'd argue shorter than the average cheerleader skirt. So that next Friday, to my parents' surprise, I was ready to go that morning in my golf uniform, and took a bag to keep the clothes in, to change into after school. But I just said Fridays, we can wear our uniforms to class, and they accepted without question and took me to school. Well, by second period, I was sent to the office again, and the first thing the assistant principal asked me was, why I would deliberately disobey her, right after our last conversation, and threatened in school suspension. I'll never get anywhere in life by not listening, yada yada yada. When I finally had a chance to get a word in, I said, but this is my school golf uniform, and I pointed to our school's logo, which was sewn into my polo shirt. You said, students can wear official school uniforms to class, why are the cheerleader uniforms okay, and mine isn't? This isn't even a skirt, it's a skirt, it is pants. I still remember how pissed off she was. She stared me down, for what seemed like a millennium. Then she snapped, and told me to get out of her office, and go sit in the lobby area. Then I knew what she meant, and she would be calling my parents about this blatant disrespect. So I waited and played on my iPod, and chatted with a nice secretary, trying to keep myself distracted, because, in reality, I had been really trying not to cry. I had massive anxiety when it came to authority, but I still had my naive sense of injustice, and I didn't just want to let this go. After about 20 minutes, she popped her head out, and in a very monotone voice, told me I could go back to class, and to let teachers know I had gotten permission from the front office, to wear my uniform. Then she went back in, and closed the door, before I could even think to respond. I spent the rest of my day dealing with teachers, questioning me about my outfit, and one or two calling the front office, to double check my claim that I had in fact gotten permission, and went to practice after school as normal, before being carpooled back home. My dad met me at the front door with a small smirk, and I asked him what in the world happened, because I knew he was the go-to contact for my school so I knew she called him. He explained that, when she called and tried to get him to come to the school and get me, and talked about punishments for my insubordination, he immediately began to argue with her, and admitted he raised his voice quite a bit, asking why I wasn't allowed to wear my sports uniform, that the school provided to me as a dress requirement at my golf practice, and mentioned taking this all the way to the school board, and resolving this obvious favoritism. He then asked me not to do that again, but that he was proud of me, and told me, I know I had told you never to start a fight, but to always fight back, I always thought physically, but you damn sure took the advice. Long ago, in a land a couple of hundred miles away, my father wanted to dress up the front corner of our property, with a section of decorative fence, and a few rose bushes. Myself, being a teenage boy and not having the good sense to be somewhere else, was drafted to help him one hot July Saturday afternoon. We brought the new fence post to the corner of the lot, along with a shovel and a post hole digger, and set about the task. It was a long slow process, as the clay heavy soil was fairly dry and hard baked, and as such, each hole was taking the better part of 20 minutes to dig. This definitely wasn't on the list of things I wanted to spend my afternoon doing, but such is life. Right about the time, we started on the final hole, mom yelled to dad from the house, announcing that he had a phone call. As these were the days before mobile phones, dad headed off to the house, and instructed me to keep digging until I get back. Lucky for me, this hole went a bit different than the first four. 
About the moment he got to the door of the house, I busted through the clay layer, into much sandier soil, where I could get a couple of inches of soil in one scoop, rather than perhaps a quarter inch per scoop. Easy peasy. Now, I was a good kid. I didn't cause trouble, of any significant variety, I got good grades, and I helped out around the house when I got caught unaware. But seizing an opportunity for malicious compliance was definitely among my personal strengths. So I kept digging. And digging. Post holer in squeeze, post holer out, don't repeat. Dad wasn't on that phone call very long, but I made good time, and by the time I saw him at the door coming back, I was quite literally putting the post holer all the way into the ground, to the point where the tips of the handles were just below the surface of the ground, and I couldn't really dig, because I couldn't open up the handles to squeeze the digging end any longer. So, if I had to guess, I'd say that hole was about 5 feet deep. Dad, how's it going? Me, I think it's deep enough now. Dad, let's put the post in and check. Me, a huge grin while he stoops over to pick up the post. Dad proceeds to drop the post in the hole. All the way in the hole. See, these posts were maybe hip height when installed, probably about 5 feet long themselves. So there's Dad, momentarily struck speechless, amazement washing across his face. He looks at me. Me, you told me to keep digging until you got back. Shrugs. Dad, you little she. And laughs. Dad had to grab the post with his fingertips and pull it back out of the hole, and it wasn't but a few seconds of work to refill the hole to the proper depth. And to this day, he loves telling the story of his maliciously compliant son. Follow up. Years later, Dad realized he should have followed the, call before you dig rule. Turns out, that hole I was digging was within a foot or two of an underground main power line for the neighborhood. He still has a bit of an, I almost killed us guilt about it. And just to head off the puns at the pass. He was kind of shocked, when he learned where that line was buried. Unexpectedly finding sand while digging, is actually a sign you might have found a trench, where pipes or wires are buried. It should be taken as a warning, that something might be down there. If you like our video, subscribe to watch more.